Okay, so this is the third part of our six-part discussion on hypothesis testing, and we will be covering the z-test for two sample means. So here's the formula that we'll be using. Um, we have z is equals to sample mean 1 less sample mean 2 divided by the population standard deviation multiplied by 1 over sample size 1 plus 1 all over sample size 2. So again, for the variables, we have your x bar with a subscript of 1. That's the mean for the first sample, so this one. And then x bar with a subscript of 2. That's the mean of the second sample, so this one. And then we have n subscript of 1 and n subscript of 2. Those are the sample sizes for the first sample and second sample, respectively. And then the last variable for our formula is the sigma, which indicates the popu population standard deviation. So please take note that we will use z-test if the standard or population standard deviation is known, which is indicated by our uh, Greek letter sigma, and uh, the sample size is large. So this should be um, greater than or equal to 30. Okay, so please take note. This is uh, greater than or equal to 30. Uh, I was not able to, to uh, include the equal. Okay, so, but please take note on that. And um, this is the critical values for Z-test. If you have uh, watched the second part of, of this six-part discussion, we have actually used the same table for critical values of Z-test. And in that, or from the previous video, we have also discussed how are you going to identify what critical value are you going to use. So let's go towards the illustrative example. So we have here um, all hospitality and tourism management students in a particular school were found to have variability in grades in their production management class. So it is expressed in the standard deviation of their grades, which is 15. Okay? And uh, the two samples among these students made up of 40 and 54 students for each program uh, were found to have means of 97 and 92 respectively. So those are their scores. And uh, based on the grades of this hospitality management students or based on the grades this means uh, can we conclude that hospitality management students are better than the tourism management students in their prodman class okay so at a one percent level of significance so again we have here the mean scores of hospitality management and mean score of tourism management students and we will now try to assess whether the hospitality management students and tourism or whether hospitality management students are better okay, than the tourism management students in terms of their Prodman class. So uh, again, this is our case, the same with, with the uh, previous video. And we will again follow the seven steps. So if you uh, if you don't know how to uh, follow or how to to undertake the following steps, you can just go back to the first and second video okay, for you to to be refreshed on how are you going to uh, undertake all of these steps. So let's start with the first step. We will now formulate your null and alternative hypothesis. So um, in here, we have 
our null hypothesis, which is hospitality management students are better or are not better rather than tourism management students. Okay, so where did it came from? From the question. Okay, our research question. So we are trying to identify whether hospitality management students are better than tourism management students in Prodman class. So null hypothesis, uh, it's a hypothesis that is objective if you will go back to the first video. Okay, so if you uh, don't know how to formulate your null and the alternative hypothesis, please do go back to the uh, previous videos. Okay, and then we have our alternative hypothesis. We have hospitality management students are better than tourism management students. So it contradicts your null hypothesis. And our level of significance, so it's given, it's 1%. So it's 0 0.01. So in here, what type of test statistics are we going to use? Uh, it's actually Z-test because our population standard deviation is known. So it's this one, 15. And then we have a sample size which is large. Our sample size is greater than 30. So we have here 40 and 54. And we have two sample means. Okay. So we have two averages. So we have here the first sample mean and the second sample mean. So the average scores, average score of the 40 students, average score of the, the 54 students rather. So we will be using Z-test for two sample means as again stated on the title of this video. And uh, this is a directional hypothesis, so we'll be using one tail test. So again, if you're not familiar on how you are going to determine whether it's directional or non-directional, please go back to the video on the introductory part, the first installment of this six-part series of <clears throat> um, testing of hypothesis. So... We will now determine the critical value or the tabular value. So our tabular value at level of significance 0 0.01 and its one tail test is 2.33. Okay, so again, that was discussed to you uh, on the previous videos. <clears throat> so let's now compute for the value. Um, this is our formula. So we have sample mean 1 less sample mean 2 divided by standard deviation of the population multiplied by 1 all over sample size 1 and plus 1 all over sample size 2. So in here, we have sample mean 1, so that's 97, it's placed here, and then sample mean 2, which is 92, so let's place it here, and then we have standard deviation, so it states here that the standard deviation of their grades is 15. So let's place 15. And what is the sample size of this 97? So 97, we have 40 students. Okay, so we have 40 and 54. Their scores are 97 and 92 respectively. Okay, so for the 40 students, they've uh, earned a uh, weighted or they earned an average score of 97 so there so one all over 40 and one all over 54 for the second sample size so if we will simplify this function we will arrive at 1.5979 okay so that's um, for the the computation and then next step is we will now compare the values of our computed value and our tabular value in which our <clears throat> computed value is less than our tabular value therefore we will accept null hypothesis okay so what will be our interpretation now so again we will accept null hypothesis our interpretation is this our hospitality management students 
are not better than tourism management students in their Prodman class. Okay? So that's our null hypothesis. So meaning, there's no significant difference between the mean score of these 40 students and the mean score of these 54 students. Okay? So there's no significant difference between these two scores. Okay? Let's move on to the next example. So we have here, uh, let's say your department wants to know if there's a difference in the mean net weight of two brands of noodles. So we'll be using 10% level of significance. And let's say the uh, sample sizes are as follows, 32 for brand F okay, and 37 for brand Q. And their uh, mean net weight are as follows, 198 for brand F and 200 for brand Q. And then you have a population standard deviation of 5.70 grams. So again, we will follow the seven steps. We will formulate our hypothesis and then we will set our level of significance, we will identify the type of test, we will determine the tabular value, we will compute for, for uh, the computed value using the uh, appropriate statistical test, and then we will compare computed versus tabular value, and we will interpret the results. So first, our null hypothesis based on the problem is there is no significant difference uh, between so there should be word between here okay so please take note on that there is no significant difference between the mean net weight of the two brands of noodles and then our <clears throat> alternative hypothesis there is a significant difference between the mean net weight of the two brands of noodles so our step two our level of significance is 10% uh, so there it's 0.10 our alpha level and what type of test are we going to use so our population standard deviation is known it's stated here population standard deviation is 5.70 grams and then our sample size is large so we have 32 and 37 that's greater than 30 and we have two sample means we have the mean for brand F, which is 98, and the mean for brand Q, which is 200 grams. So therefore, we will be using Z-test for two sample means. And uh, we are going to use your non-directional hypothesis. So that's a two-tailed test. Okay, so that's two-tailed test. This is our alternative hypothesis. There is a significant difference between the two brands of noodles therefore uh, for our critical values or value rather at 10 percent level of significance and using two-tailed test our tabular value is 1.645 okay it's 1.645 so if you will compute so we have here 198 the first sample mean less 200 the second sample mean okay we have our standard deviation deviation population standard deviation of 5.70 multiplied by square root of 1 all over the sample size of 98 or 198 rather so 198 uh, that's brand f and we have used 32 okay 32 noodles and the last variable so we have one all over 37 so that's this one 37 brand q noodles so that's our sample size for us to get a result of 1.4535 okay so step six we will now compare uh which one is higher so our computed <clears throat> value is lower than tabular value Therefore, we will accept our null hypothesis still. Okay? So again, if you don't know 
how to conclude you just go back to the uh, first two videos okay therefore for the interpretation there is actually no significant difference between the net weight of your brand F and brand Q noodles. Okay, so these are their mean net weights uh, based on our statistical test. And there is no significant difference. Okay, so meaning it's in statistics they are somewhat the same. So that's for the third part of this six-part uh, series of discussion for. Testing of hypothesis.